Okay, spontaneous IG Live with Dr. Marie Tuin, and today we will be talking about creating your own dating path. So let me go ahead and invite Marie here. Okay. Yay, here we are. Hey, hello. All right, and I see Layla's here, so great. Perfect. We've got a couple of people. Awesome. So Marie, um, maybe let's start with a little bit about your background and why you're passionate about this topic. <laughs> and yeah, then what we're talking about. That sounds great. Thank you. I love the topic of creativity in dating. I think mm. it's so important to look at you know, every aspect of our life as a creative project you know as something that we can feel empowered to make decisions in and not just something that oh here's a path and we have to default to it and dating can be tricky because there is typically a lot of conditioning in that realm like we were born in different family structures with different models and whether we want it or like it or not or even realize it or not there's going to be some ingrained or inherited values and templates in that arena that don't always really fit what we have in our heart. Um, and, you know, my own background was interesting because I was born in a pretty non-traditional family. My parents never lived or um, decided to live together or decided to get married by choice, but still wanted to co-parent and had me in that very um, progressive kind of structure and that showed me on the one hand like um, that okay we don't have to do the mainstream thing like we can create our own path like they were very good examples of people who did create their own path like nobody else in their community did anything like it um, and yet sometimes I'm realizing like oh okay I learned from them a certain set of beliefs around like traditional values not being good and being something that I must avoid. So I also, you know, in my own path, have to kind of free myself from what I inherited. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit about my personal background and why I think this is such an interesting topic. Like what I was born with that question, like what does freedom mean? <laughs> what does freedom of expression mean? And what does love mean? What does belonging mean? Like, does it have to look a certain way? Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think, you know, you're touching on something so important, which is that no matter what kind of configuration you grew up in or came from first, it's like, it's still our, you know, on us to really examine what beliefs and ideas we've inherited about partnership or relationship mm -hmm. or love or romance, and which are our own chosen values, like you call them. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of have you talk about this topic today. So I'll just pass it back to you and mm. say, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So a lot of people come to me as a dating coach and, um, oh, hi, Jorge. Yay, California <laughs> Five. <laughs> um, a lot of people come to me as a dating coach with a lot of internal conflict um, and oftentimes that is a conflict of values or desires. Like there's the, oh, here's what I think I should want. I should want, you know, maybe to get married, to have kids, to, you know, like you name it. Like it depends on, again, like where the person is coming from culturally and personally and their family of origin. And then there's some other desires in them where they might feel that, you know, like what I really want from my heart is not okay. Mm. Um, and, you know, everyone falls somewhere on that spectrum, but our society now is also very much, you know, like all about independence and individualism. So there's also kind of um, a permission that's happening, socially speaking, um, of looking inwards and not saying just like, oh, where do I fit in in, in a family structure, but What's my purpose? What's my individual source of meaning? So um, 
a lot of traditional belief systems are getting shook or, you know, challenged and in some cases dismantled. So a great example of that is gender roles or even the construct of gender at all. Like mm -hmm. we've seen in the past few years, like how gender is no longer this like absolute, like we don't have to pick, you know, one side, we could be non-binary, we can transition. Um, and with that also comes like really reassessing gender roles. Like if I was born a woman and I still decide to identify as a woman, like what does that mean for my love life? Does it have to mean that I need to fill certain templates and be maybe the more submissive person or earn less or et cetera, et cetera. Like there's all of those questioning of, of roles that were pre-established by past generations. Um, another one is heteronormativity, like the idea that, you know, love should be between a man and a woman. Of course, that has been challenged for a long time. Another one is mononormativity, the idea that monogamy is better than non-monogamy and translates into more commitment and more intimacy. Um, my dissertation for my PhD was on the phenomenon of compersion and that, um, that is um, feeling happy for your partner when they experience joy with somebody else. So it's in the context of consensual non-monogamy. And I've talked to so many people who are not monogamous and yet have deep intimacy with their partners and such deep closeness. So again, the idea that monogamy needs to be a marker of positive relationship is positively getting challenged. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I could go down the list. <laughs> I was just going to say one thing about, you know, mm -hmm. how it's like, whatever is true for you, but also like, sometimes we don't know because these beliefs are like so ingrained and then also societally reinforced. So like mm -hmm. something where, you know, these beliefs about what is preferred, preferable, better, uh, will make us happy. Right. Ultimately we have to make ourselves happy, but we have these certain ideas about like, you know, these structures or these ways of being in relationship that like we give priority to or somehow think are better. And it's like, I think, yeah, that list is, there's just so much to unpack that it's mm -hmm. like being willing to be curious. I just think is such a big piece of this whole yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> to be curious and yeah, to give ourselves permission to, to question yeah. what we've been taught and then to enter our dating life with more clarity, more of a sense of like, okay, I'm going to give myself permission to explore different mm -hmm. options and, and lead, you know, in communication with that kind of clarity. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, partly that's also just about respect um, yes. to other people. Because yeah. oftentimes I hear people just feeling betrayed or um, misled, like they might have gone on an app and like the person kind of made it sound like they wanted a full blown relationship and in a traditional mm -hmm. sense and really they didn't and they might not have done the work to examine what is it that they really wanted and then really own it mm -hmm. because you know everything is okay in an absolute sense as long as you're dealing with consenting adults we're lucky enough to live in a society where we can explore, you know, beyond mononormativity and heteronormativity. And, you know, like we don't have to have children. We don't have to live together. Like we can really construct our relationships in ways that really make sense to us, to our hearts and to our bodies. Yeah. And I love the question you and I were chatting earlier and you had posed this question of, um, what is it that you want your dating journey or your relationship journey to teach you or like give mm -hmm. to you in some way? You phrased it better than right. I Right, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like what do I want to learn from my dating journey and, and how do I want it to transform me? Yeah, how do I want it to transform me? And I think like this is such an important question to ask as you go in because I think otherwise we're kind of going in blind, right? With this concept of like relationships, the way to do it going to make me happy it's like that's the one of the like core things in life that I need to kind of have my life together right it's just like all mm -hmm. these beliefs there and 
And it's like, okay, like, what is it that I, how do I want to show up to relationship? What do I want from relationship? What am I learning? And like some of the things we had talked about was like, you know, more open heartedness, curiosity, courage. How can I bring that sense of like, you know, stepping into myself as I show up to date? And like, what does that look like without attaching the win to necessarily like getting the partner or the outcome? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, that is... um challenging because of course you know like most people do want an outcome um and it's especially challenging because um people want a multiplicity of things and yeah when you do enter a dating space like you know you're going on tinder or bumble and there's not like necessarily a good way to know what people want Like you have to go through like, oh, the process of being attracted to them from their picture and then maybe starting to send messages. And if people haven't really expressed so much verbally what they're looking for, then it might be down the line. Like once you're already attached to a person that you discover like, oh, darn it, we want such different things. (laughs) And yet, you know, oh, sorry. Like, and yet we don't necessarily want to box people in from like the first conversation of like, hey, what is it that you want from life? And what do you want from me? Like, you know, we do Mm. want a certain level of, of creative freedom. So we Mm -hmm. sort of have to Mm -hmm. see it as an adventure in order to have, you know, a good experience. Mm. It's true. And I think to the more vulnerable we allow ourselves to be by owning that which we want or desire or that we are, our values truly then we will have less kind of sifting to do because we are being clear about the message we're putting out in the world about our own values as it pertains to relationships so i think we like there's this kind of like collective conscious layer of like oh i need to um hide myself and mask myself because people can't hold this truth or that truth of mine and it's like actually that's not serving you because it's just keeping you from finding an actually aligned fit if like if you really own your your values Mm -hmm. and like lead with that imagine if we all led with our values it would just be a lot more simple (laughs) but Mm. for some reason there's like you know of course there's this fear of rejection fear of um yeah, not being seen, not being appreciated, not being lovable because of some of the Mm -hmm. things that are important to us. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. that is so big. And that's the, I feel like that's in a way like the crux of the work of dating, in my opinion, and a lot of what I work with, with my dating coaching clients is, okay, like, can we get closer to your vulnerability, like who you really are, and can you really own that Mm -hmm. in spite of the fear of owning that? And that process can be so liberating. It can be very scary, but it, you know, like if you do it in dating, then it can reverberate in other um, areas of your life as well. Like it can create freedom and space and an ability to just like own who you are in all the areas. Yeah, and I think it also creates more space between um, you and let's say people that you're meeting in a dating context and in, in that there it's never like a true rejection of you it's like if you put your cards on the table and you're like these are not, without being you know dogmatic I'm like oh, I need these things <laughs> there's like virginity mm-hmm. and then there's like open-heartedness and exposing your values but like if we're doing that then it's not, if something's misaligned, it's not like, oh, I don't like you. It's like, oh, this connection is not in alignment with the type of relationship that's important to me. And therefore I can let it, I can release it. Like Mm -hmm. you do you and I'll do me. And like, we keep going and there's not, it's easier to kind of like release things when we are Mm -hmm. not attaching to them as somehow being, I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. It's like, well, no, this just isn't what I want. And it gives us that, uh, we are more empowered in our in our dating. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What other? Um, I know you had a few questions as people are kind of exploring this topic. Do you want to share those questions with? The yeah. Group? So yeah, like um, one of those questions is: What are some of the ingrained or inherited values or beliefs that you have? 
um, that you might want to question or challenge or examine. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it might be traditional values. Like it might be like, oh, I would like to re-examine the idea that, okay, I have to get married to be happy. Uh, mm -hmm. For some people, it might be the other way around. Like it might be like, oh, I have to not get married to be happy. <laughs> like mm -hmm. what are those beliefs that might be constraining you and your ability to express love? and to feel and receive love? Are there places that, <clears throat> that you just feel rigid around and you think might be limiting mm -hmm. your ability to do that? Um, number two will be, what are some chosen values or some things that you might be curious about exploring but that you feel shame or hesitation around? Um, are there things that you want to experiment with but that you just feel not necessarily shame but also just like fear like actually for some people it is just like really believing in the possibility of falling in love mm. and they feel a lot of fear around that they might fear you know that they would lose themselves or that they would lose a certain amount of control over their lives and for some people it might be like oh i want to explore um, love with someone of a different gender and I feel some shame about like well what would what would my friends think or a different mm -hmm. age like I might want to date someone who's 20 years apart or a different culture a different religion what would that mean this is so good it's almost like noticing the the where your edges are where you start to cast judgment on self even it's like mm -hmm. okay where what's acceptable what's not acceptable and like where what what kind of formed that for you is where you can kind of start investigating mm -hmm. yeah mm. then number three is what do I want to learn from my dating path right now and how do I want it to transform me Mm -hmm. so yeah are there qualities um, like you said earlier that I want to learn and embody more with my dating life like maybe that's self-compassion maybe that's compassion for others maybe that is releasing judgment towards others that's a really good one <laughs> yeah. maybe that is just becoming more open-minded more courageous beaming my light stronger, like owning more who I am so that I can be a stronger presence in the world. Mm, Feeling yeah. more internal freedom. Self-compassion so, is a big one yes. too. It's mm -hmm. like, I feel like if you can use life to kind of help you in any capacity build more compassion, whether it's mm -hmm. for yourself or for others, it's like a good use of your energy. And exactly. if dating is something you're interested in and relationship is something you're interested in, like how do you craft that part of your life to continue to deliver value to you, to your heart, to the being that you want to be, regardless of how long it takes for you to actually find a connection that feels aligned. And sometimes for some people that takes a long time and, and others, it happens really quickly. And it's like, I think also notice, yeah, whatever judgment we hold around that, like, oh, this is taking too long. I hear that a lot from people in, our, in the mm. community. It's like, I feel like, you know, it's taking too long, but it's like, so that's one of the ideas we might have about what's good or bad, right? Long mm. doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It just mm. might mean, oh, I need to get crisper on my values or how can I continue to use this process to continually step into the person that I want to be and like have mm -hmm. it shape me have it mold me yeah oh my god you just said that so perfectly I love it <laughs> <That's great. laughs> so I guess yeah anything else on this uh on the topic before we wrap our beautiful chat <laughs> well I mean it can be very difficult to see it that way and to be detached from outcomes I so get it and yet, yeah. Um, yeah. if we can remind ourselves that, um, you know, like, ultimately, <laughs> um, this life is a blank canvas. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, like, the more creative power we can give to, to that co-creation, then the more fulfilled we're likely to be. Like, if we can remind ourselves, like, okay, this is not a pre-established map. It is a canvas. Mm -hmm. It is something that I'm 
co-creating with life. There's a lot of factors that I'm not in control of. Can I also accept the things that I'm not in control of? Love that. Yeah. And I think, you know, to your point of being detached from outcomes does not mean being detached from your emotional experience around dating. Like it doesn't mean we're going to get to bypass the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the fear, the doubt, all those feelings that naturally come with it. But the more like awareness we can bring, we can also also have room for everything else that's there like the growth the learning the joy the connection the heart centeredness and like I do think one of the most satisfying types of joy is like witnessing when how we are different and how we grow situation by situation where you're like oh my god I didn't have the same reaction as I had last time or like Mm -hmm. wow my heart somehow can hold this differently like Mm -hmm. that is such a unique flavor of like delight that is like Mm. you know it's like no one else can give you that right right oh yeah I want to leave you with like a small story actually of a client um, who is you know who really really wants to have children and he's older so it's really difficult you know to find the right match of someone who's younger and yet he went on a date the other day and he said something like okay I she didn't want to be you know going on a second date she wanted to just be friends and that was not what I was hoping as an outcome but I did as well as I could at my current stage of development and I thought that was so insightful to frame it Mm. as you know also like a stage of development because he's been really working on his communication skills and um, on his ability to actually connect with whoever he's in front of on a date and to really make someone feel seen and Mm. and he did that and he was really proud that it's kind of like it was a very great achievement because then he can also like transfer that skill to everywhere else and even to himself you know so yeah you know I think there's something to be said for like having our own backs like you know being like yes I feel good about how I showed up in that moment and how I'm Mm. showing up like counting those wins it 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 is so essential to kind of continue on and keep showing up to our hearts in that way Mm -hmm. I love that having our own backs giving ourselves a big hug (laughs) (laughs) exactly like you're doing great you're doing great Mm -hmm. (laughs) or like the days you're not like well that wasn't cute that was not a good moment (laughs) 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 but (laughs) with a bit of levity you know so Mm -hmm. yeah thank Mm -hmm. you so much Marie this was Mm -hmm. amazing and um it's always such a joy to have you I'm really grateful that we had this little spontaneous um IG live Likewise. Yeah, everyone, thank you for showing up. Um, Please reach out to Marie. Marie does incredible coaching work. And I'm going to post her link in our bio and Mm -hmm. check out Hum Hum, ask DM with any questions you have. But we're really grateful to have you here. Yeah, so good to see familiar names. My cousin is here and uh, Ruel is here and Jorge. Thank you for showing up. (laughs) Yay. All right. Bye, everyone.